Good morning, YouTuber friends and patriots. Polluter shall not slay your first and vassals. I'm useful idiot. And uh, today I want to talk about the newest Obama scandals, the NSA scandals, and uh, of course the PRISM system. And uh, I guess it's going to be predictable that uh, I'm kind of surprised this is a, uh, a new scandal. Not that the, uh, the ideas and issues themselves are not disturbing and, and deserve all the attention. But just the fact that it's happening now, considering uh, most of us have known that uh, there's been massive data mining and surveillance going on for years. And uh, why this is a surprise. I mean, one only has to think of the uh, Utah Data Center. And of course, as usual, I'll, do, I'll attach all the relevant material below. And um, so anyway, this uh, vast dragnet has been known for a long time. And of course, the uh, uh, AT&T secret rooms uh, used by the NSA uh, scandal that broke years ago. And um, so anyway, it's just the timing of it uh, that uh, is kind of interesting. And this led me to some uh, certain epiphanies about what might be occurring. But that's going to be a video I'm going to do right after this one. So uh, let's get into the details. So first of all, we have uh, a story that broke about uh, the NSA, National Security Agency, currently collecting telephone records of all Verizon customers, all of them, um, what they call metadata. And uh, basically, it's just a vast amount of uh, material that they collect. And in that, in that sense, Obama is, is correct when he says uh, a lot of the content um, in this uh, collection of data is not uh, readily available um, because a lot of it needs to be encrypted or the technology needs to be developed to sift through this material. As it turns out, that brings us back to uh, what I brought up earlier about the Utah Data Center. And that is exactly what it is. It's an NSA center that cl collects and stores vast amounts of this metadata that's collected every day. And in fact, I did another video on uh, the Rosetta Stone um, that they're developing, quickly developing the technology to uh, be able to sift through this material, in which case they will be able to access all the personal information names and content of all of this, uh, all of this material. So uh, on the one hand, the denial, denial by Obama is plausible that they don't have access to the specific content, but at the same time, the technology is being developed and, and is, uh, if it's not developed already. So going back to the NSA, currently collecting telephone records of all Verizon customers, ongoing daily basis under a secret court order. Of course, all this stuff is done under secret court order, so there's nothing too sinister about that, but uh, both within and outside the United States. And that's nothing new either. We've discussed that over the last year, how all the uh, material from the inside and outside the U.S. is being scooped up in dragnets. And in this case, this uh, Verizon situation is supposed to be a three-month order, but uh, of course it's always ongoing. That's why I don't understand uh, why there's so much drama about this either. This has been going on for seven or eight years now, uh, non-stop. And uh, the fact that it's being covered, so much drama now is uh, suspect. So um, so the information that Verizon could get would be the number of, num the phone numbers of both parties involved in a call, the location data, the call duration and time, and some unique identifiers. So other than that, does not include the contents of the message or, or personal info, uh, supposedly, but certainly we have no reason to to believe on that count either. And they said it's not known whether Verizon is the only cell phone service provider doing this. Um, you'd be naive to think that that not, uh, that, uh, not all of the uh, telecommunications companies are in on this. So they're, they're all doing it, I'm sure. And, um, and then we have this uh, new uh, uh, surveillance story breaking at the same time, which once again, it makes this kind of suspect. Um, and, and that's this uh, PRISM system. But it was established uh, in 2007 under the Bush administration, so the fact that it's ongoing, I mean, granted, uh, Obama made all sorts of promises about how he's going to be different, but anybody that believed that is naive. He, he is on board for the agenda. The agenda is more important than, than the puppets. Bush is just a, a facilitator. Obama is just a facilitator of the same agenda. So, of course, he's on board with the same agenda and running all the same programs. Why would anybody be surprised? So, uh, so this, this PRISM system established in 2007 has gradually added nine companies. 
So granted, when it first started, I think it just included, uh, say, Microsoft and then Google. Um, but over the years, has uh, added uh, Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, uh, PalTalk, AOL, Skype, YouTube, and Apple. So, of course, now I get uh, my confirmation that they're uh, keeping an eye on me. Hey, uh, hello, NSA. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, everything's cool. So, uh, anyway, then the uh, NSA and FBI tap directly into the servers. And, and uh, Facebook denies it, Google denies it, Microsoft denies it, Apple denies it. But we've seen this before, um, that uh, with AT&T, they have secret rooms, the NSA taps right into the servers. So we have no reason to uh, uh, believe that they're not doing that. So these denials mean nothing. And they're obtaining uh, audio, video, photographs, emails, documents, and connection logs uh, that enable uh, tracking of a person's movements and contacts. So, uh, so yeah, that is pretty sinister. But once again, it's all stuff we've known for a while. We've known that Facebook is working with the government. We know that Google's working with the government. We know Microsoft's working with the government. Um, this is something I've uh, brought up in probably at least a hundred of my videos, if not more, the government corporate partnership. And uh, that's that's the uh, intelligence uh, data information complex. So we have the military industrial complex and now we have the information data surveillance complex. And uh, that includes the vast security industry and all these uh, intelligence agencies. And uh, we were supposed to get leaner and meaner and have a more efficient intelligence after 9-11, uh, but instead we're going to have an uh, even more vast network that's going to cover every single electronic communication there is. And uh, the, uh, the articles that are talking about this PRISM system being exposed point out that it's court approved, um, which is true, uh, but this that's the same under Bush. A lot of that stuff was court approved and there was a controversy at that point, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then uh, says this is only re being revealed now because a whistleblower came to the Washington Post. This Washington Post story that broke a couple days ago. But the fact is, uh, William Binney, who worked for the NSA for 30 years, has been exposing the fact that the NSA has been gathering all this data pretty much for the last year at least. Um, and uh, he's uh, included in my uh, video about the Utah Data Center. I'll put that below. But he. He was involved in that, and he, he understood the implications, and he's been blowing the whistle um, for a, a year. So uh, so let's get to uh, more about this. So this uh, prison system and uh, this data gathering was started uh, a month after the 9-11 incident. So in October 2001, the NSA and Bush administration implemented a bulk collection program of domestic telephone, Internet, and email records. So it's been going on since 9-11. And uh, in 2006, uh, the, under the Bush administration, the scandal broke. And that's when it was revealed that Verizon, Bell South, and AT&T were involved in the same sort of scandal. So um, it didn't bring uh, Bush down. And it was uh, there was a lot of controversy, but it passed um, after a while because just like Obama's doing now, Obama's saying this is a practice, is a critical tool for preventing terrorists attacks, and that's exactly the same uh, excuse that uh, Bush gave. So they're just uh, puppets spewing the same uh, byline. And um, interestingly enough, uh, there was a, a series of hearings and investigation in the 1970s about surveillance activities in the U.S. And uh, one senator even remarked, quote, the NSA's capability at any time could be turned on the American people and no American would have any privacy left, such as the capability to monitor everything, telephone, telephone conversations, telegrams, it doesn't matter, unquote. So here we have uh, the same phenomenon uh, 40 years ago, 45 years ago. So we're going on almost, once again, almost a half a century of the surveillance state in the NSA, just to different degrees in changing uh, to adapt to current technology. And, uh, boy, they have their uh, work cut out for them now with all the electronic technology. But So there's warnings all along. And what this also shows is that uh, this apparatus goes back further than we probably imagine sometimes. And then it's been ongoing from administration to administration. You can think what you want about Carter, but uh, this NSA program 
of uh, data gathering was going on under his administration and everyone since. So once again, we see this continuity between the actual policies of the so-called Republicans and the so-called Democrats uh, when they occupy the White House and control Congress. So uh, the results always the same. So, uh, so to hit some uh, high points, uh, the uh, justification that most congressmen knew about all this mass surveillance is true. They've known since the Bush administration. So any denials that they don't know much about these kind of programs are untrue. We've had, and we've had congressmen warn about, warn about them. And this is, this is the same Congress that's on board with the National Defense Authorization Act. This is the same Congress that's been on board for uh, put, putting the Patriot Act uh, into law and uh, continuing to renew it, even its most egregious points. And uh, all kinds of surveillance has been going on for years. Remember the carnivore program under, in, uh, under the FBI back in the, under the Bush administration, too. And, of course, that, the way they handled that was they just changed the name because it was so diabolical sounding. Then, uh, like I, bring, I, I brought up, the Utah data center has been being constructed with billions of dollars and surely our congressmen all know about that and what its purpose is. It's a, it is an NSA building. There's no uh, uh, debate over that. And hundreds of billions of dollars are going into it. And it's to collect data on a massive scale and store it and then go through it. So uh, everyone certainly must know about that. And then uh, we have to look at the way uh, these, these, uh, this breaking scandal with Obama and then the way the scandal broke under Bush, we'll have to compare. I'm sure it will play out pretty much exactly the same. Um, and then, uh, of course, this has a lot to do with the fact that Bush and then uh, Obama both uh, are on board with giving the uh, telecommunications companies retroactive immunity. So remember when under Bush all this stuff was revealed about massive surveillance. So uh, one thing they did was uh, give the telecommunications companies retroactive immunity so they could not be uh, liable for uh, their co uh, collaboration with the government and uh, have lawsuits brought against them. So that's all they needed to hear. So they're pretty much on board, all on board, um, in, in spite of uh, posturing that we occasionally hear about how, about how they're not wanting to provide information to the government. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, William Binney, um, NSA veteran for 30 years, a whistleblower. He's been out there for a year telling us all this, so it's nothing new. And um, we also know the corporate media um, certainly has an agenda here. And uh, the fact that all the corporate media is uh, concentrated into a handful of companies, um, the fact is that uh, this is a, a story they want to present. And those same companies are the ones that are... Uh, collaborating with the government. So if you look at all the media where you get this story from, um, you're talking about Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, AOL, YouTube, Apple. Those are the very same companies, the ones that are collaborating with government. They're actually in the media now talking about this story. So the fact that uh, it's so dramatic means there's a very interesting uh, agenda going on here. So anyway, there's my, uh, there's my little bit about uh, these new so-called Obama scandals. I know it's predictable that uh, I think they're relative. Uh, but let me once more state for the record that uh, I'm all for having this kind of uh, stuff exposed. And uh, this, is, uh, this is egregious no matter which president's doing it, and Obama's doing it now, and it's uh, hypocritical and predictable. and should, come, should come as no surprise. And I love the fact that more and more people are getting exposed to the realities of uh, what our government is doing. Um, I just want people to concentrate on the fact that it's the state, not necessarily the party. So to think that uh, getting rid of Obama is going to fix things just by getting a Republican, no, that same agenda will continue. And that, that's ultimately my point. And, uh, but more importantly for me, I have to look at the way that the, the stories are presented, because the fact is that if they're filtered through the uh, very corporate media um, that cooperates with the government generally, then we have to assume that uh, there's some sort of agenda of how they want to present this story. And uh, all these uh, scandals are being piled on Obama right now, and it, uh, it's led me to an epiphany. But more on that later. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.